This is one of those things that just shuts you up, man. Of any dish, I feel like everybody just gotta sit there and just enjoy it. Just... Dim sum is a style of Cantonese cuisine where everything is served in small portions. Most people have it with their families on the weekends, and although there are some high-end spots and low-end spots, the recipes probably haven't changed much in 30 years until now. Chef Tony Dim Sum is trying to elevate the art of yum ta. Of course, it's more expensive, but is it worth the extra price? A lot of people out there are skeptical at the idea of elevated Cantonese food in America, including us, so let's find out. This is my first time at Chef Tony Dim Sum in Pasadena. My personal opinion, something I saw that was different was the way that it was presented. It's kind of like an, a more elevated dim sum experience, and the coconut buddies caught my eye, so I was really excited about those. Chef Tony Dim Sum definitely reached me, so I definitely feel like in terms of demographics, it's, it's kind of pushing the envelope in terms of who it is reaching. David, we got all the dim sum. They're doing some really cool things while keeping it very traditional. For example, here, Andrew, look at the hakao. The black wow. squid ink hakao with gold leaf. Truffle shiumai, pandan bao, hakao with chili oil inside. Yeah, you can't see how different that is. That one's gonna taste really different. David, this is a mushroom mm. pastry with the yin and the yang. Mm. And then, David, this one is actually a dish I haven't had. Chinese donut with shrimp paste inside and mayonnaise on top. Andrew, round one here at Chef Tony's, we have the elevated dim sum dishes. Dave, I'm so excited to try. Oh my gosh, this is a squid ink haga with a gold flake on top. You guys know what the gold flake does. It just adds that pop. Dim sum, sometimes the stuff is stir fried, but obviously most well known for high labor intensive steam dishes. Okay, so David, as we eat this, we are gonna be comparing it to the traditional version of this dish that we've had before. This is the squid ink haga with gold flakes on top. Mmm, okay. Right off the bat, I taste the truffle and the squid ink. It's very light. I don't taste the gold, but you're not supposed to. That's good. Okay, that's good. Right off the bat, that was good. The original haka doesn't have the truffle flavor, and it doesn't have the slight squid ink, which to me, squid ink and truffle, kind of somewhat similar. But I think Great. they did a good job. The squid ink, you can really feel it. Um, sometimes you get squid ink wrappers or squid ink noodles, and you almost can't taste the thing. They did a good job with this. Right, I need you to try the black squid ink. Fire. Fire. You said John described fire. <laughs> Yeah! Hey, they cancel culture and as, as South by Southwest, but let's bring it here, man. Andrew, I'm not saying people are basic here, but would you say for a lot of beginning dim sum eaters, the shiumai is their absolute favorite? It has so many different elements to it. it has the open top dumpling, has shrimp, usually mushroom, pork, shiumai with truffle. As you guys can see, there's mm. truffle on top, right? The shrimp pork mixture in the middle. So I usually think that sometimes truffle is a not so cheap trick to making something feel high end, but it definitely does add something different because that whole truffle flavor is not something you get in Asian cooking a lot. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that shumai a lot. The way they broke down the fibers of the pork, it was very easy to eat. First two things here at Chef Tony Dim Sum were bad. <laughs> Pretty good. Here we have the squid ink lava bao. David, here we can expect, you know, your classic salted egg yolk filling that's gonna be oozing out of a squid ink bun. I'm excited, man. I mean, just visually, you know, nowadays, everything has to be so Instagrammable. Steamed lava bao with salted egg yolk. Very striking, mm. the egg yolk color behind the squid ink. Mm. Oh. Wow, I mean, that whole thing, man. Oh man, that's good. This is one of those things that just shuts you up, man. I swear to God, like, of any dish, I feel like everybody's just gotta sit there and just enjoy it. Just... We're shooting three for three. Three for three from the field. Hey. Obviously this spot is significantly more expensive than your average dim sum spot. Man, it is an experience so far. They got mushroom crystal dumplings. Wow, I'm crystal excited about mushroom. this one. I wonder if there's any sort of like beet juice or anything that we're gonna be able to taste that's in this red crystal wrap. Crystal mushroom dumpling. For the vegetarians, light. I think, I think that that was the first one for me where it wasn't hitting but I'm not gonna go against the quality. The quality oh, yeah. was there, it just wasn't for my taste buds. Man, so, that was clean tasting. And I know that here at Chef Tony Dim Sum, one of the goals was to make dim sum even cleaner. Because it's really not supposed to be greasy. Traditionally, some is not supposed to be greasy. I think so. The original regular hakao 
But th there's supposedly some chili oil inside, so I'm not gonna dip it first. This is the crystal shrimp dumpling, hakao. Original hakao is so clean and just shrimp so tasty. Subtle. And you know what I love about it too is, I'm not gonna lie guys, obviously we're at an expensive spot. The cheap spots, they do use a lot of filler to mm. fill up the hakao. This ain't your average dim sum spot. It is not. Woo! I've liked everything. Here at Chef Tony, they're switching up the recipes 10 to 25%. David, next I gotta talk about, David, this is the shrimp and pork pan fried pandan bun. The biggest thing for me investigating this elevated canto dish is how much pandan flavor is really in the bowl. It, it kind of tastes a little bit like coconut. That's what I would compare it to right off the bat for anybody who hasn't had uh, pandan or pandan. Try it, the pandan bun. I could tell when I was biting into it, I was smelling the pandan first and then I hit the pork and shrimp. That's good. I like that bun. I'd like to see even more pandan. I'd like to see them take it up. One more okay. dollar for pandan on Okay. There. I mean, it's clearly elevated here. Yeah, the dim sum's elevated. By all means, it is elevated. Shrimp, crab, and matsutake crystal dumpling. What I love, man, is just like biting into an unassuming dumpling and just getting all that flavor that you're like, whoa, I didn't expect it. It's a crystal dumpling. I, I agree with you that some of the stuff here at Chef Tony's has been unassuming visually, but it has come with the flavor. Wow. Bam. I've never had dim sum that tasted like this before in my life. And I've been to a ton of places. I think we gotta get into the Feng Zhao, Andrew. Oh my gosh, I'm a big fan. Feng Zhao, AKA the Phoenix Claws. So right off the bat, visually, I wouldn't say it looks super different. Oh, they cut it open. Okay. Definitely less greasy than average. Mm -hmm. there's, there, there's no cornstarch in it. Quality wise, very high. Flavor wise, pretty traditional. White colored chicken feet. Mm, all right, so this one's a cold one. It's gonna feel a little bit more like gelatin. Ooh, I got that chili cake. Most people do not order this. I recommend it. Tons. I love spicy one ton, man. Spicy one tons, I wanna say it's more of a Shanghainese dish. Oh, the one ton is gonna be more plump. Like the, the meatball in it is gonna be bigger. Spicy one ton. Mmm, love that sauce. You know me, I like that sweet vinegar flavor. Very plump, big one ton. Shanghainese one ton, it's much more flowy, much more pillowy. It has more skin on it. It has more skin on it. The Cantonese one tons tend to be a little bit more packed, tightly. David, we have a couple pastries here that have been waiting on us. And perhaps some people would say, you guys waited far too long to have this. Because you know for some people, Andrew, it's straight shiu mai, cha shu bao, straight off the rip. Uh, French style cha shu bao. Wow. Oh my God. That crystal, <laughs> bagua layer, has a big impact. Whoa. Wait, is this long to eat this one? John, I might need to see you try this, oh, man. This sure. is a task for Mr. 200 Pounder. This is how good it is. We had to flip the camera out. Ah. That's insane. Andrew, Andrew, I've got to save this for John over here. This, this remaining three fourths of the John is coming for you. And let me just tell you guys if you come here to Chef Tony Dim Sum, absolutely get the French style chashu bao, yin yang mushroom pastry. Mm. To me, I gotta say the mushroom pastry and the mushroom dumpling weren't my favorite, but I could see if you're vegetarian, go for it. Fried Chinese donut stuffed with shrimp paste and mayonnaise on top. Let's get it. Interestingly enough, some honey walnut prawn vibes. This is like a way to get honey walnut prawns without ordering honey walnut prawns. Wow. I'm gonna dip it in some soy sauce. Wow, I feel like Kobe White. Wow. 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 Wow, bro. That's crazy. Wow, that was good. Wow. Chicken bun. Oh, I smell oh. the ginger scallion. You know it. There is a very strong gurng chong ginger scallion if mixture. you know, you know. Chicken buns at dim sum, usually pretty boring. You just said chicken bun. I was like, nah. Cracked it open, I was excited. That is a very gurngy gurng chong. Baby, just be Gurng, you guys, by the way, is ginger. I'm just saying that's a very gingery, ginger scallion. Just Best chicken bun I've ever had, I swear to God. Because I don't even like the chicken bun at dim sum. Best chicken bun I ever had. All right, David, we are moving on to round two. Lunch slash somewhat dinner food. Yeah, and uh, probably the transition dish that we should start off with are the fried egg rolls. We do them differently here, guys. Semi-influenced by the Japanese style. Andrew, this is a deep fried seaweed with shrimp spring roll. Wow. I really enjoy that. Wow, that was good. So for me, David, I'm usually not impressed by spring rolls and egg rolls, to be honest. That one was good. I was fire. 
I think more people gotta do the fried spring rolls this style. That was good. We have the deep fried crispy king prawn. David, you know why I'm excited to eat this? Cause I'm gonna eat everything. The head and the tail. Honestly, the head got the most flavor. I love eating this style of shrimp, man. Eat the entire thing 100%. You get maximum shrimp flavor when you eat it like this with the head on it, the shell on it. I'll even eat the tail. I'm not. Yeah. Here I have the squid ink with crab meat and gold leaf on top. They're just stacking on the trends here. Squid ink noodles with lobster meat. David, predictions, which one do you think is gonna be better? Oh, that's a good question. Crab meat better. has more flavor, but sometimes to contrast with the noodles texture-wise, the lobster's gonna be stronger. That was really, really, really good. Luckily, I am lobster claw type of guy. I've got my decision. Say ours at the same time. Three, two, one. The lobster. lobster. The lobster one tasted better because the lobster <clears throat> flavor just blended better with the squid ink. I don't know why. I'm not a chef. I didn't go to culinary school. I'm sure somebody who was better trained on this topic could explain to you. I'm Say not... no more, bro. Say no more. That was... Squid ink is like, man, it's really tough to explain how it tastes. I would say the squid ink tastes kind of like a clam. Kind of just like oceany. Now <laughs> I've gotta say, Andrew, the food was elevated. No cap. This is the black truffle over chicken with cilantro and onion. Boom. They have cooked this like the house special chicken guayfe guy or the ginger scallion white chicken bazzi guy. Don't Yo, disappoint. Yeah, I wish the chicken piece could have been a little bit fattier, a little bit juicier, but other than that, the flavor was there, and I've never had that flavor mixed with boxy kind of. A truffle flavor on that particular one was a little bit lighter than I thought, but I think that's okay, because the cilantro and the onion shine through. I'm really wondering, this question is like, is this where dim sum is headed? Is this where dim sum needs to be? To kind of be in Pasadena, to be to have chandeliers and to have a diverse crowd. Like, is this what it's? Oh, we bumped into food media. Food that media. We bumped into people. food media people here. There's a lot of non-Asian people here. This food was truly elevated. We got gai tong here, chicken soup. soup. Chicken Look at that. soup in a pot, in a teapot. And is yo pour? Can you pour me up a shot of chicken stock? <laughs> Doing shots of chicken stock. <laughs> gai tong, chicken soup. That's good. You have to just put your hand underneath like this. And... <sighs> mm. Moving on to our last dish of this section before we get to dessert, David, we have a Cantonese classic. You can get this at many, many Cantonese restaurants. You have the beef chow fun here, AKA gong chow ngao hao. Gan chow niu he, gong chow ao he. The hao fun or the chang fun is sliced much thinner. Almost looks like some type of noodles rather than the fat rice noodles that it usually is in. Super ungreasy. That was the fluffiest beef chow fun I've ever had in my entire life. Let this be heard today. That, that was the fluffiest beef chow fun. David, round three here at Chef Tony Dim Sum Man. Dessert round. I think we gotta start with these bunnies. Coconut bunnies, these are the most jiggliest, cutest coconut jelly bunnies. This is the most jiggliest, cutest coconut bunnies I've ever seen, wow, man. Look at this. These bunnies are so cute, so fluffy, so... Oh, oh, oh. Yo, David, does this just go to remind you how cute Cantonese love? They're just all... Oh, they have seen you just have to say that you're fine, and you're not really fine, but you just can't get us All right, all right, all right. This all right. is just eat it. Like we said, even the things that may not be super duper elevated taste wise are elevated presentation wise. It's you're getting one of the two, if not both. The flavor was not out of this world, but that presentation was really cute. Hey, oh, and this is this is a this is a favorite for this the older traditional crowd. sponge cake right here. <laughs> this should be like contest of who can withstand digging their fingers into a freshly steamed sponge cake, fluffy. I can smell, I can smell like the brown sugar. Mm, that was really good. That was fire, bro. Dude, this is one of the best sponge cakes I've ever had. I don't even like sponge cake. I really don't. I never order it. The sweetness, the fluffiness, the sponginess, the moistness. Yo, hold up. Oh. What the That was incredible. Andrew, look at the egg white don tots that are shaped like abalone. That's egg white? Yeah. Egg white, egg white. You swear. Bam bam. Well, I've never, so we've never had this. I've never, I've never had, had this. I've never had an egg white. Usually yellow on the inside because it's the egg yolk. So got the flavor, but yeah, I could see that it's egg white. That's interesting. Being the shape of an abalone versus a, a circle. 
quality is there. Again, like I cannot complain. For an egg white one, I was actually still really impressed. Oh, Andrew, durian bun. Oh my gosh. Mm, got the funk. Ooh. I'm ready. Durian pastry. <laughs> Let me waft it over there. I think that this is a great way to eat durian if you've never had it. It's a great way to try it. David, most spots don't even want to deal with a durian pastry because they're like, oh, no one's going to order it. It's too stinky. Pull the durian right out. Wow. As we end off the food section, but kind of move into a uh, discussion section, we have this pan fried ginger cake here. It almost looks like, dare I say, pork belly. Or something more like Vietnamese. It's like that individually wrapped ginger candy. Ah, mom and dad like it's super spicy. Mm -hmm. I think it would appeal to people who don't like chocolate. Because if you guys know, a lot of Asians actually do not like chocolate. And it's true as pure form. Because it's just too, it's just too rich. I don't like chocolate in its pure form. It blocks. Continuing our investigative series on the Cantonese American cuisine and culture, but really Cantonese culture around the globe, Andrew, where does Chef Tony's fit? Because like we said, a lot of banquet halls, which are traditionally places where dim sum served, uh -huh. are closing down. Andrew, everything goes through changes. Andrew, can you stay a Pikachu forever? Or does Pikachu need to turn into Raichu? Yeah, I mean, but, but you know, some people, Andrew, they want to stay a Pikachu. People are saying like, you know, because Pikachu was the cutest Pikachu, even though much less powerful and much lower ability. That's a Pikachu. Yeah, yeah. I think people, they latch on to a version of a Pokemon that they relate to and they want to freeze frame that forever. They want to stay Pikachu forever. Guess what, guys? Pikachu's great. You should enjoy Pikachu while it's here. But if Pikachu doesn't turn into Raichu, Pikachu is done. It's going to lose to every other evolved Pokemon. And the verdict is in. Overall, Chef Tony Dim Sum is worth the money. If you grew up eating dim sum, you know that the whole experience and menu was due for an update. And so many people in recent years have tried to elevate dim sum, but it just came across as needlessly expensive. Call this fusion if you want, but I think it's just a step in the right direction, and I applaud them for sticking a difficult landing, even if your wallet has to pay a little bit more for it. Make sure you let us know in the comment section below what is one dim sum dish that needs an update and number two, let us know another Cantonese food or anything that needs an update. Again, this was the Canso series. Until next time, we out. Peace. <laughs> oh, you got it. You know how to style yourself. Yeah. Okay.